innovation. It solves problems. Good news, problems are everywhere. Just look out the window if that's even still allowed. Facebook told me it's illegal, so who knows? I just left my windows boarded up since election day just to be safe. No worries, thanks to this little innovation, whenever I wanna look out a window, I just throw on the VR goggles and boom, watch porn. It's extremely calming. Innovation helps keep us entertained, helps keep us safe from COVID and idle grocery store chit chat. This girl's father innovated up a virginity protection blanket with his disapproving face on it. Genius. Although if I was her boyfriend, this wouldn't work on me. I would see that as a challenge and innovate right back at him and uh, cut a hole in the mouth. Someone's getting pregnant through their father's face, but that's just me. I have a fetish for innovation. This is why I'm obsessed with Ark Invest, which sounds super creepy after what I just said, but it's true. When the world went to shit, Kathy Wood was on all the shows saying, Innovation gains much more traction during difficult times than it does during normal times. During difficult times, innovation usually takes off because it solves problems. Innovation actually gains traction and market share uh, during periods like this one. Innovation really does provide the solution to great problems. ARK's main fund, ARKK, is up 140% in 2020, crushing all the major index funds. ARK saw 2020 for the virginity protection blanket that it is, and they cut a hole in the mouth. And that is exactly the philosophy we're gonna need to survive the knee of the curve. <laughs> Welcome to Knee of the Curve. I'm Emmett Short. Don't get left in the past. Hit subscribe to stay up to date on filths. Futurists, I'd like to, you get it. I innovated this bedroom into a technology talk show set and focal point for my girlfriend's resentment. If you wanna support the idea that tech news and jokes belong together, hit the like, buy some merch, join Patreon, or just tell my girlfriend this is gonna work and share this with a futurist in your life. This whole thing is about investing this show. So if you're into getting free stocks worth anywhere from eight to $1,600, there are links in the description to sign up for Robinhood and Webull. There's also a link for Skillshare that gives a free month of premium membership to the first thousand of my subscribers to sign up. Let's get into the video though. ARK Invest. ARK is a global investment firm. We are focused only on disruptive innovation. That's our sole focus. In a world where technology is permeating every sector and innovation platforms are converging, DNA sequencing, robotics, energy storage, artificial intelligence, blockchain technology. These are the five major innovation platforms today that are evolving at the same time. If each one of these five platforms were mature, We'd be living in the sickest, futuristic world full of sentient robots, programmable money, flying cars, space exploration, and a human population as diverse as the aliens in sci-fi movies. I'm not saying it's gonna be a utopia, I just think it's gonna be fucking rad. And if I'm gonna live to see it and become a space cowboy, I need money, and technology has to go fast because no amount of money is gonna keep me alive if the tech doesn't exist. So investing in innovation kills two birds with one stone. Kind of seems like a no brainer, right? Why isn't everyone doing this? The financial markets have lost the plot. Uh, what we've seen since the tech and telecom bubble and bust, and then the 08 09 meltdown, is tremendous risk aversion, fear, and it's manifested in, um, in, in portfolios going passive. There's been a movement towards passive and indexed-based investing. Kathy Wood just called the whole industry out for being scared little bitches. I love that. So we have an open research architecture. We are sharing our research into any social network that we think will help our analysts and our investors learn from us as we learn from them. We are exchanging knowledge, seeking the truth. Kathy Wood gives so few fucks she just gives all her research away. 
which makes other people chime in on Twitter giving information back so she learns even faster. Genius. Diabolical genius. It's like the opposite of the philosophy of investing. Don't be greedy so you can get it all! <clears throat> this made me a little suspicious, so I did some digging. Kathy Wood founded ARK in 2014 after having a squeaky clean career in finance. Some would say too squeaky. I was born with the gift of faith. I really do believe that. First thing I do in the morning as my coffee's brewing, I read Jesus Calling, open it up randomly and say, God, speak to me. Show me your will. Show me your way. I would run into the Ark of the Covenant. As I began to get this idea of a firm going, I knew I had to name my company Ark for Ark of the Covenant. Kathy Wood is Christian? Just don't be a Christian. The one thing you cannot be is a Christian. It freaks people out in the valley. There are some people out there that believe that we're living in a computer simulation. <laughs> well, that is supported by the evidence. Before you get all heated thinking I'm slandering Kathy Wood, I'm actually not. I applaud her bravery. Super woke. Anyway, Christianity can totally exist within the simulation. Think of it like a side mission. Makes the game way harder, takes a lot of time, and it's full of NPCs. Either way, she's a go-getter and a trailblazer, and that's who I want handling my money. Do you want some index fund full of companies you don't believe in? Did you know when you buy the S&P 500, you get more stock in tobacco companies than in Target or Starbucks or FedEx? It's disgusting. It's like, just because you show up to an orgy doesn't mean you would let everyone there inside you. They say short-term, the stock market's a voting machine. Long-term, it's a weighing machine. Telling people to invest in index funds is kind of like telling them to pay taxes and not vote. Index funds are like NFL teams that only sign veterans. Cool strategy for a year, maybe. ARK is about building capital, but their prime directives line up with the kick-ass future I'm voting for. Space Cowboy, and it's coming at us fast. We have never been in a period of innovation like we are now. Uh, if we were measuring this on the Richter scale in terms of impact on the global economy, this would be a nine compared to maybe a five or six in the late 1800s, early 1900s. That's a big ass wave of tech coming at us. And I know political news is important, but it's not more important than this fantastical future coming to smash us. So. Let's talk about each technology and maybe Kathy can help us make some money. The main themes with each of these five technologies is their platforms, they're getting cheap, and they're converging. First up, artificial intelligence. It's listening to you, listening to me right now. It's obviously a platform. Phones use AI to find the fastest route, categorize photos, finish sentences better than a soulmate, and keep me locked in my warm and cozy echo chamber, protecting me from ideas it knows will challenge my fragile sanity. It's going to be so much more impactful than the internet. The internet transformed media, it transformed retail. It did not transform healthcare or the industrial sector or the utility sector. Uh, AI, deep learning, is going to transform all of those. AI is driving cars, flying fighter jets, approving loans, composing music, and writing episodes of my show. I should not be able to afford that. Why is AI so cheap? Because we've taken the human programmer out of a large part of the equation. This sounds like programmers are losing their jobs when in fact, they're just using AI to become more powerful while we continue to pay them the same. It's a feedback loop. The programmer directs the AI to make itself smarter to help the programmer direct the AI to make itself smarter and on and on until the programmer and the AI coalesce into a high pitched And that's how the world ends. It's called the big ring, yeah. The cost of AI training is improving 50 times faster than Moore's law. In 2018, it cost $10,000 to train an AI on a billion images. Now it's three cents. Now if I could just afford a billion images. The point is, AI is in the cost decline near the curve and everything it touches is gonna benefit from its exponential growth. Google's AlphaFold AI just solved one of biology's grand challenges. It can predict a protein's shape for pennies, while other methods cost hundreds of millions of pennies. Why do we need to know protein's shape? 
Well, because proteins control how DNA expresses itself, and knowing a protein's shape tells us what it does so we can control DNA. Paving the way for this guy to stop spending his pennies on plastic surgery to become an orc, and instead just genetically become an orc. Of course, we'll, you know, cure disease also. These are gonna be very healthy orcs. This brings us to the next technology, DNA, the code of life. If DNA is the code, you're the app. And just like an app, your success really comes down to how many people you can get to play with you. If we ever wanna write our own DNA apps, we need to decipher the code. And once again, things are getting cheap. Uh, DNA sequencing, to give you that example, back in the uh, early 2000s, it took $2.7 billion to sequence the first whole human genome. Today, we're at $1,000, and we believe in five years we'll be at $100. Companies like Illumina are deciphering the code, companies like Twist are writing the code, and companies like Moderna and CRISPR Therapeutics are learning how to deliver the genetic payloads. Fun fact, Moderna has the exact same LinkedIn bio as Pornhub. Fact. The company I'm most excited about is Tessera Therapeutics because they are about to leapfrog CRISPR. CRISPR only cuts genes out, but it doesn't paste anything in the gap. Tessera uses proteins called mobile genetic elements to write new code in place of the old code, which makes me wonder, how much new code can we put into me and how much old code can we take out of me before the new me is arrested for murdering myself? For an entire video on DNA nanotech, click uh, the link up here and in the description. Next up, energy storage. Arc thinks plummeting battery costs are going to reshape the economy. It is such a change that is very difficult to get uh, investors to understand how quickly this is going to happen. Trust me, Kathy, I get it. Telling people things are happening faster than expected is the name of my first sex tape. And it did not go viral. They've since gotten a lot longer and subsequently way more investors. Get your BDE coffee, link in description. Tesla recently showcased their new battery tech, which cuts costs by 56%. That's like cutting your rent in half by moving up to the penthouse. And the cheaper batteries get, the more uses we find for them, causing that convergence feedback loop. They are converging with each other to spawn new innovation. A really good example of that is autonomous taxi networks. What are autonomous taxi networks or autonomous vehicles? They are robots. They will be electric, so they'll be run by batteries, and transportation will be moving on to the grid. And they are powered by artificial intelligence. So those are three platforms converging. AI is being used in materials engineering to figure out new battery chemistries, while robots are also being used in AI chip fabrication. These robots are getting smarter. They're gonna develop their own identities. They're gonna wanna be orcs. ARKQ is ARK's ETF focused on robotics. It's up 96% this year as costs for robots comes down. One major reason for cheaper robots is cheaper sensors. It's Wright's Law, which states, double your order, save 15%. This is a coupon for Thai food, but that's essentially correct. And every robot needs sensors. We're talking autonomous vehicles, 3D printers, manufacturing, shipping, surgery. If AI's taking all the knowledge jobs, robots are taking all the labor jobs. I got three videos on universal basic income as a safety net for robot-based job loss. But until UBI materializes, the best way to prepare for robots taking your job is invest in robots taking your job. I know, it sounds like digging your own grave, which sounds like a chore. Don't worry, robots will be there soon to dig those graves. But if you take one thing away from this video, it's it should be, don't fail to profit off the robot apocalypse. You just need to get enough money to get through the rough patch between when everybody loses their jobs and when everything becomes practically free. We believe that, yes, we're in a, in a deflationary world because of all of the innovation that's evolving at the same time today. The cost of living really well may plummet to the point where UBI could cover all your bills, like 
Like right now, Bill Gates can't even afford a robot chauffeur, but once they exist, they'll be cheap enough for everyone to afford. Which brings us to ARK's most controversial bet, blockchain. Bitcoin's like Conor McGregor. Even people familiar with it think it's volatile, but it keeps growing in value. But the smart money thinks the next decade is gonna be quite a bit more chill. For a full breakdown on why Bitcoin is awesome, check out my two previous videos linked here and in the description. But let's be real, I don't think anyone watching this needs me to explain to them that money nowadays is digital. I haven't spent cash in months. Look, if you're still spending a lot of cash, you may have an unhealthy strip club addiction. I'm not knocking strip clubs. I'm just saying, do it healthy. Touchless payments, make it rain with gift cards. Just be smart. Plus, the government is printing so much money that soon, impressing a stripper could require a dangerous amount of bills. This is a big problem for companies that have mounds of cash and don't want it to become worthless. Due to the rapid expansion of the monetary supply by the central banks, the cost of capital has tripled from 5% to 15% over the past year. We had hundreds, 500 million worth of cash, and we realized that if we held it in cash, it was going to debase by 10, 15% a year, and I didn't want to lose half of it. That's Michael Saylor, CEO of MicroStrategy. He recently made headlines by storing his company's cash reserve in Bitcoin. It's volatile maybe in the first decade. The next decade going forward, it doesn't look like it's gonna be that volatile. It actually looks like it's emerging as the primary treasury reserve asset mm -hmm. for people that are looking for some way to avoid the great monetary inflation. The government gave him $650 million at the bargain basement interest rate of 0.75%. And he's putting all that into Bitcoin too. Here's another clip of Michael. Ah, sorry, I don't know how that clip got in there, but it makes the correct point. Michael has BDE, that's big ball energy, and he's running his company accordingly. Historically, gold has been the best store of value, but even gold gets deflated over time. Gold miners are going to print 2 million, 2% 2 more every year. If you own the entire supply of gold in the world, gold miners create 2% more every year. The rule of 70 says every 35 years, the gold supply doubles, which means that you would own half the gold supply in 35 years, a quarter of the gold supply in, in uh, another 35 years. And in 100 years, you're going to own about 15% maybe even 12% of the gold supply. If big institutions follow Michael's lead, it could drive a rush of adoption. I think that as investors start to understand the Bitcoin story, they're gonna migrate their capital on the Bitcoin network, and that's gonna create a virtuous cycle of adoption followed by price appreciation, followed by value accretion, followed by technology integration from companies like, you see Square and PayPal, it'll be Apple and Google shortly. This stuff is gonna happen way faster than anyone thinks. Having your money invested in some way, shape or form in this future is one of the most important things you can do right now. Don't forget to pick up your free stocks in the description. One thing I've recently gotten super into with these apps is options trading. I had zero idea what I was doing, so I did what any smart, dumb person would do, and I took myself to school on Skillshare. The information I found on options trading on Skillshare was extensive. I followed some instructions, and this is what happened to me. I made $2,200 in a week selling puts. That's obviously not gonna happen all the time, but before I learned what to do on Skillshare, that definitely wasn't gonna happen at all. They've literally got thousands of classes on tons of creative topics and it's all on your schedule. You can go on a learning binge whenever you want. There's also a community, so you can kind of ask questions and network. It's also just 10 bucks after the trial, so those first few options trades I did essentially bought me 18 years of Skillshare. Pretty worth it. Click the link in the description to get your free month. Ryan Stout and Jeremy Huntley contributed some great jokes to this video. If you guys don't have Ryan's album, you should, well, he's got three, so pick one of them up. And Jeremy and I are about to start podcasting together. When those go live, I'll link them down below. Big thank you to the Patreon members who have the same vision I have of making tech news comedy content go mainstream. So. If you wanna pitch in as a writer, a correspondent, producer, whatever, hit me up on Discord, Twitter, or Instagram, or join these awesome people as a patron. 
or just check out some of these knee of the curve videos to stay up to date on how technology is changing everything. Thanks for watching. Peace.